morning. Today, it's Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. Today, I'm going to talk about some heartwarming things that have come out of COVID-19. I'm tired of bringing up all the dastardly deeds that have been going on in relation to this event. So I think it's time we talked about some good deeds. So I'll start in California. There's lots of gratitude for medical providers these days. And in Santa Cruz, California, a recent anonymous note to the local hospital was no exception. Thank you for standing up and staying up to care for our community, it said. This human kindness is what makes you heroic. It was a donation that came with that note. One million dollars that has hospital employees cheering. The gift was designated entirely for employees, nurses, cleaning staff, lab techs, medical records, even mailroom staff and security guards who have worked at the Dominican hospital for at least a year are getting a bonus check. Full-time staff will get $800. Part-timers will receive $600. Now that's a donation. That'll make your heart warm. That kind of appreciation. Now this is from the other side of the country, from Maine. G. Smith, who lives in Edgecombe, Maine, was 11 months old when she was adopted by her parents from a Chinese orphanage. According to her parents, Yuji has expressed an interest in learning about her birth family since she was speaking English as a very, very young child. When Yuji was five, shortly after the family moved to Maine from Connecticut, her DNA sample was submitted to a genetics analysis company that traces ancestry and family collections. As Yuji grew older, they would check in with the family's website for possible matches. And when she was 11, they tried to connect with the top match, but did not get any response. But on her 12th birthday in November, Yuji and her parents scanned the results of positive relative matches. And again, the same person in China was the clear top match. And they sent the message through the website. 20 minutes later, Yuji had a response from the woman, Quin Grong Chen, a third cousin. So Yuji and her parents began communicating regularly with Chen using a Chinese social media app, WeChat. And over the course of time, they learned that she's a mother of three sons and two of the sons live in the United States. Well, when the coronavirus hit Wuhan, the WeChat conversations focused on Chen's health and safety. And then when the dynamics for the virus shifted across Europe and inevitably into the United States, Chen was very concerned then about the safety of Yuji and her parents. So they were in constant contact back and forth using WeChat. Chen was concerned and asked many questions. And then at one time she asked, did they have face masks? Yuji and her parents continued to tell Chen that everything was okay, that they were safe. But Chen didn't care, and she persisted, and she said that she could send face masks, that the Chinese government would allow her to send up to 200 face masks at a time. And that's how Yugi Smith, 12 years old of Edgecombe, donated 200 surgical face masks to the Maine's veterans home in Augusta, courtesy of a relative in China and in honor of a World War II vet. Special gifts, a little girl, nearly 12 years later, with a box of 200 surgical face masks. Now here's a quickie. Davy Jones is a butcher, and he's also a well-known tweeter. So he tweeted a message that said, if anybody out there is on benefits and can't afford a meal, get in touch with me and I will give them a two week supply of meat and I will deliver it to them, to them free of charge. So if you're interested in a get a free meal, 
David Jones's shop is in Earl's Heat in Dewsbury, Yorkshire, in the United Kingdom. So you see, people are kind all over the world. This is not just about those of us in the United States. Rebecca Mera is a kind person. And so she goes shopping at the local supermarket. And on the way into the store, as she's walking by, she heard a woman yell from her car. She walked over and found an elderly woman and her husband in the car. The woman cracked her window a little bit open, and Rebecca backed up a little bit to maintain social distancing. And then the woman explained in tears that she and her husband, who were in their 80s, were afraid to go into the store because they they felt they're in this vulnerable group. So they gave Rebecca a shopping list, which she happily took, and they gave her $100. And she went in, and she did the shopping for them. And when she came out, she loaded the groceries into the trunk of their car and gave them the change. And then the woman had told her that they had been sitting there for 45 minutes waiting for the right person to come along and help. And they sure did pick the right person. So you see, all these stories that they are, are somewhat different, and it's not all about money. It's about help, doing something to help. And it's diametrically opposed to all the clowns that are running around with guns, protesting, stay at home. They should be out helping. Now I'm gonna show you a video that was developed by a company in India called Firework. And this is a video that's called uh, Spark the Joy. It's a social impact campaign that encourages people to do an act of good. It's a little bit offbeat, but I think you'll enjoy it. Not bad, huh? That's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe.